Alright, we're concluding today's show with a hockey segment. My way too early 2024-25 fantasy player hockey rankings. It should be a fantastic segment because I just took some of the names in this list who I thought were really intriguing and fantastic players from this season and kind of want to share them with you guys as well because I think there's a lot of interesting depth in this list. This is the top 300 players as set out by ESPN for next season. So without further ado, let's get right into it. The number one overall player may shock a little bit of people, but he's no shock to me. I think that he's earned this title. He's definitely competing with a lot of different players for the number one overall fantasy spot. But it's Nathan McKinnon on an Avs team that certainly is still in their championship window. It's not closing, and he's a top-line center. He's earned that title. He had 626.5 fantasy points this season, second in points, third in assists, fourth in goals. That's a well-rounded player who I believe deserves to be the top spot. Obviously, you can argue about so many different players getting the top spot, including the guy I'm about to mention right now, also a Stanley Cup finalist at the moment. But... Nathan McKinnon, at the end of the day, is still a spectacular pick to be your number one overall fantasy hockey player for next season. Especially on an Avs team that is so much depth. If you look at the Avs, honestly, Nathan McKinnon being the number one overall player could be surprising because they have so much center depth with guys like Miko Rantanen, Gabriel Landeskog, Kale McCarr as a defenseman. Just so well-rounded, and then Nathan McKinnon just is the glue that brings it all together. So Nathan McKinnon, I'm not mad at that. I think that Nathan McKinnon certainly is the number one fantasy player heading into next season. But coming in at number three, our first Stanley Cup finalist on this list, and it's no surprise as well. He could be number one, definitely in the debate any given day, Connor McDavid. But as you can see, he definitely scored a lot fewer points in fantasy than Nathan McKinnon this year. So maybe... It really isn't a debate. He only had 505.4 fantasy points this season. He was 34th in goals with a big thing that a lot of fantasy hockey supporters would love about Conor McDavid is this is the year he finally found the balance in terms of distribution of the puck. He was first in assists. He was third in points as well. So as you can see, as Conor McDavid elevates his game, yes, maybe his goal production goes down as well as his fantasy production. But it just goes to show that Connor McDavid is ever adaptable, one of the most skilled players in the history of the NHL. And on any given day, he can become the number one player. He's certainly looking up the barrel at Nathan McKinnon. But Connor McDavid right now certainly is elevating his game to new heights. We are seeing it before our eyes in the Stanley Cup Finals as well. To find the second Stanley Cup finalist and the first from the Florida Panthers, you have to go a little ways down the list to number 14 and Sam Reinhart, one of my favorite fantasy players. You guys have heard all about him on this podcast as the Panthers have made it to the Stanley Cup finals. One of my guys, he's a do-everything player. Tough in the face-off, tough in the forecheck, fantastic distributor of the puck, scores goals, especially on the power play as well, a huge part of that Florida Panthers power play unit. And he's just an every man for that Florida Panthers team that, that strikes you as a team-first unit, a collective group of players tasked with the identity of wanting to win the Cup. Sam Reinhardt this year, 445.8 fantasy points, second in goals, only 86th in assists and 12th in points. So obviously... This year, he was primed to be more of a goal scorer for this Florida Panthers team. They expected him to score a lot more goals than they expected. As you can see, in terms of assists, not as many. Definitely lower on the list than some players. But 12th in points just goes to show how well-rounded Sam Reinhart can be, even when his stats are inflated in one specific area for him. Overall, I think that it's kind of surprising that he's the top Florida Panther because they have a lot of excellent players that you might be wondering about, like Alexander Barkov, where's Matthew Kachuk? You can ask those questions, but Sam Reinhardt, I think, in terms of fantasy, if you look up Florida Panthers fantasy player in the dictionary, a picture of Sam Reinhardt should appear. So, I'm glad to see him this high on that list. The first goalie on this list is a guy who 
is getting a lot of respect, has won a lot of Azena trophies, mainly a team that hasn't really been as competitive in the Western Conference as people would want, in Connor Hellebuck. Connor Hellebuck is a fantastic fantasy hockey goalie. For the Winnipeg Jets, a team who has failed to kind of compete in this crowded Western Conference. He has 310.2 fantasy points, 4th in save percentage, 59th only in goals against average, but 2nd in wins. Connor Halibut is such a steady presence in between the creases for the Winnipeg Jets. They're a team that I think is rapidly in decline. They had their heyday a couple of years ago. But they haven't really broken out in the slightest but Connor Hallibuck has always been a constant in net for them. And it's no surprise that he's a number one net minder in ESPN's way too early rankings. In terms of defensemen, you have two guys on separate ends of the spectrum here. In terms of a young defenseman who has been a breakout fantasy star over the past couple of years. And a defenseman who's been doing it for many years. And is still doing it at a very high level both in real life and in terms of fantasy. At the number 18 position is Rasmus Dahlin. At the number 10 position is Roman Yossi, a man who has done it for many years, like I said. 431 fantasy points. Obviously, not a high goal score, only 98th in goals, 12th in assists, but 22nd overall in points. Not too shabby for a defenseman, especially an aging one. And Rasmus Dahlin, one of my favorite fantasy defensemen over the recent couple of years, 339.5 fantasy points overall, also very low in goals. We're also very low in assists this season. But overall, both of these guys proving that no matter your age, defensemen can be very vital in terms of winning you fantasy hockey games. So I'm appreciative of who Rasmus Dahlin and Roman Yossi represent, especially being that high up on the list at a less coveted position in fantasy hockey than a lot of people like. One of the only rookies to be in the top 60 and especially in the top 100, is Connor Medard. He's my rookie of the year, in my humble opinion, out of the Chicago Blackhawks. Obviously, problem with his jaw all year, did not have a full season, so we were kind of robbed of the potential he brings to the NHL, especially to a Blackhawks team that was looking for a generational talent. Only 227.2 fantasy points, kind of the lowest points total in terms of fantasy points in that kind of range from 50 to 60. 106th in terms of goals, 71st in terms of points, but 84th in terms of points. But, but like I said, we were kind of robbed of what Connor Bedard could be. This was kind of an amused bouche season. We are waiting for the main course from Connor Bedard. I think that as the Blackhawks continue to compile draft picks, continue to get better, Connor Bedard is going to become the face and brand of that team. They are going to utilize him in so many different ways. And I'm excited for the future of a guy like Connor Medard as he becomes one of the stars of the league. An older star of the league, still doing it at the ripe old age of 38, coming in at number 92, Alex Ovechkin. When is this guy going to retire? We may never know. He's an ageless wonder. Two hundred, wait, 302.5 fantasy points, 36th in goals. That's impressive for someone of his age, still doing it at the tender age. But let's look at our two Stanley Cup goalies. This is the most interesting uh, kind of variant that I saw from this list that I, when I was looking at it. At 55th overall was Stuart Skinner, someone who is very controversial as a goaltender for the Edmonton Oilers. 246.4 fantasy points, kind of low for a goalie. He was 31st in save percentage, 49th in goals against average. But I think what saved him is that in the regular season, he was third in wins. So a lot of people like wins in, in goalies, especially in categories leagues when goalie wins are one of the most important statistics to know about to win games. And then the surprise, in my opinion, mainly due to the fact that he, his postseason has definitely been better than his regular season, Sergei Bobrovsky. He had way more points than Stuart Skinner, though. It's 279.6. He was ninth in save percentage as well. Only 69th in goals against average. He was tied for third in terms of wins. So it's kind of weird to see that high-level variant where a lot of people valued Stuart Skinner's wins over Sergei Bobrovsky's more, you know, varied season. So that's kind of interesting. And then a player who, unfortunately, we were kind of robbed of seeing his best in the postseason due to injury, but a player who I really love 
is definitely going to rise up these player rankings when all is said and done at the end of next season. Rupe Hints. I love Rupe Hints. He just makes the Dallas Stars a better team. Who knows if he were healthy if the Edmonton Oilers would be the team from the Western Conference to represent in the Stanley Cup Finals. Rupe Hints had 307 fantasy points this year, 42nd in terms of goals, 102nd in terms of assists, tied for 72nd in terms of points. I just feel like Rupe Hints, he is the glue guy for the Dallas Stars. You can see it in the way the Dallas Stars play around to me. He's just, he's just a centrifugal force for the, the Dallas Stars. And I really hope that next season he is going to have another fantastic fantasy year. But that should just about do it for today's show. I hope you guys liked it. Throwing a little bit of hockey in there to conclude today's show. Tomorrow is going to be an even bigger and better show. More varied. I promise it won't be as football heavy. A lot more segments from a lot di more different sports. But that should conclude this edition of the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. Brought to you as always by the GSMC Sports Network. My name is Christopher Shepard. If you like today's show, like, follow, and subscribe to the GSMC Networks on YouTube. Leave a tip or donation at the link gsmc.cloud. If you do feel so inclined, any questions, comments, or concerns can be placed there as well. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We will be back tomorrow with an even better show.